I don't, did you, I don't know, like, do you, there, she's out there. You're the Florida version of Sex in the City, JD. That's when I was smoking my cigar. <laughs> Don't be an asshole today. Hey, hello, welcome. Hi. Welcome I'm so you. sorry about the last time. It must have been a nightmare for you. It was actually it was quite funny. <laughs> we just we just sat there like waiting and waiting. <laughs> What I, I look back and I thought, because I'm usually really reliable, and what happened was that your emails are entitled Gmail, just Gmail. Oh, so when okay. when I got your your email, it just said Gmail, and I because I get so many emails, I didn't just didn't take enough notice of it. So no, oh, no, that. don't worry about it. We have uh, my co-host uh, JD Danner is going right. to pop in. She got stuck in traffic on the way home from work. <laughs> right, <laughs> which is typical for South Florida. Um, right. And uh, I'm, I'm here in London, and it's uh, late. Lovely. So, right. <laughs> where are you? I'm in uh, in uh, California, in Hollywood. How lucky are you? Oh gosh, yeah. how lucky are you? That's fantastic. So yeah. let me start a little bit by saying, uh, welcome, Fiona Goodwin. You. you are a very British lesbian. <laughs> I am, <laughs> and I love British. that. And I want to tell you how I found you because it it's. Did. it's pretty funny I have a a friend um back in South Florida where I used to live and um she sent me a message with a link to uh, a YouTube clip or or maybe it was actually your website and said have you met this person because I'm in London so she assumes I know everybody <laughs> and I, I said no I you know I haven't but I'll, I will check it out and she said you have to have her on your show she's so funny so how weird that my connect was somebody from Florida. And, and I know, you know, right? It's crazy. So I follow up. I follow up, you know. Well, like, I'm delighted. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful. I, I think it's great. I think the title is absolutely perfect. I just think just billing yourself as a very British lesbian is so perfect because <laughs> I follow so many very British accounts on Twitter right and it's just it's a thing like i don't think that you know people in the states really grasp what a thing it is to be very british you know it's 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 my yeah. favorite thing because i'm so far removed from that yeah you know, that, yeah that just that little bit up to i always tell my friends it's like everybody is on their best behavior all the time because you don't know when you're going to run into the queen <laughs> <laughs> exactly right that's what I think. So tell me a little bit um, about how you how you built this this uh, persona. The, the, the persona. <laughs> well, I had been. I I did a when I came to LA. I was basically for the first time. I was escaping a, a, a relationship in um, in the UK, and and then I and I came out properly, really, in America. For some reason, I couldn't. I didn't manage to do it in Warwickshire. <laughs> really? <laughs> Can't imagine why. <laughs> no, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, a megaphone at a farm store. You know. There you go. So, um, so I came here and I really properly came out. And, and when I came out, that's when uh, everything sort of just suddenly, I don't know, it took the lid off my love of performance. I mean, it was, it was, it was as if being semi in the closet meant that I muted you know, I was muting so much of myself. And when I stopped muting myself, I, I decided I actually had the audacity to think, well, maybe I could do stand-up comedy. So I started doing stand-up comedy in, that's really why I came to LA, to do stand-up comedy. That's bold. That's bold. It was, it was bold. Like it was an act of boldness and desperation all at the same time. <laughs> that's the perfect combination, though, for stand-up comedy, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but talk about jumping into the high end of stand-up because right. you know there's such seasoned professionals out there all the time right. uh, you know it's 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 definitely not like you know playing a small club in stratum you know what i mean <laughs> it isn't it isn't and i i'm afraid i confess i i milked my britishness 
it's you're in the perfect place to do that. That's 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 what's so perfect about that. Yeah. There's an uh, assumption and, here. There's an assumption here. If you are British, you're going to be very funny. So you're already on a good, you know, good footing. I always worried about the humor translating um, mm -hmm. because they it, the funny thing is it's almost like nobody knows um, if you're being serious or not, you know, with your Britishness. <laughs> No, that's absolutely right. I've got myself into all sorts of trouble here. I've, <laughs> Have you? you know, when I, well, when you go through, when you first come to America, you go through the stage of offending absolutely everybody, you know, because we're much more cutthroat in our humor in the UK. You know, yeah. it's very, it's the sarcasm, the irony, you know, it's, it, there's a lot of, you know, cut and thrust and you, you, you kind of learn to, and when you, if you come and do that here in Los Angeles, people start crying, you know, they just, they're very sensitive. <laughs> Very sensitive. New York. Although, I would know. say if, if you were like in New York, it might be a little bit on the exactly. level. Totally. Like California, yeah. It's, it's totally. Really touch and go. Yeah, and they, get, they have feelings, they get hurt. They have a lot of feelings, a <laughs> lot of feelings in California. So so what are um like what are some of your experiences there with uh with like other California stand-up comedians? Well, I think that um the stand-up circuit here is uh, it's it's fairly brutal because there are so many, and and Hollywood is where people go to to get the, the to get into pilot season to get you know get noticed and so on. So it's very it's very brutal and and often I was playing in rooms of uh, white twenty to thirty year old guys. Oh you know? yes. So there, there's a lot of that going on, but on the whole, I people I found people very supportive. Um, often in some some venues you would you'd almost have to pay to be there because you would have to promise to bring 10 guests who are going to do the two drink minimum and pay for a ticket so you know that, that's fairly brutal yeah um, you have to build up your friendship circle before before you even get started yeah and then lose them <laughs> yeah. because they're going no I can't come on I can't come and watch another show, you know. It's true. So, are you are you right in the zone? Are you right in Hollywood, or do you? I well, I live. Um, I live in most recently. I live in Santa Monica. Okay. Yeah. So it's just sort of um, it's near the water, and you can go out and look at the waves and. Beautiful. Yeah. Have you met? Um, I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking of my one friend that does a lot of stand up out that way, Je uh, Jenny McNulty. Absolutely, I love Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> She's yeah. fantastic, right? She's great, yeah. We so we good. both we we know each well, we know each other from LA, but also from we both uh, do Provincetown Women's Week. Yes. So I did my show there just in just in October. How was yeah. it? We were wondering about that. We had somebody on that was um that was heading in that direction. I, mean, I think it was Jenny, as a matter of fact. Right. Um, yeah. And we it was talked surprising, about surprisingly well attended. Was it? Yeah, we yeah. were talking about how difficult things are, you know, yeah, now that there's this soft launch reopen kind mm -hmm. of, you know, everybody's got their own rules and, you know, Absolutely. there's nothing standard, nothing standard across the board. All depends on where you're going and what that, what that area. Yeah, is. I mean, it goes, people go from up the absolute outrage about having to wear a mask to, you know, people are vaxxed up to the hilt and yeah. heavily wearing gloves and masks and everything, you know. So, yeah, so you're right. I like the range. Just yeah, you got to wonder if they're going to show up in a, in a full blown hazmat suit or if they're you know if they're okay. That's that's pretty funny. I um, I I love the um, the community out out there. You know, like Dana Goldberg and Suzanne Westenhofer, and uh, yeah. you know all those all those Vicky Shaw, go, you know, going out that way. Too. Yeah. Um, you know, it's such a great great group because. The thing that I find the the most fun is that it's intelligent humor. You know, it's not mm -hmm. a, you know boobs this farts that. You know, I mean, it's it's quality intelligent humor, and it's um, you know, I I just I feel like they, you know, being surrounded by people like that kind of make you up your game a little bit. You know, keep you on your toes. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. you know, and Suzanne is wonderful. They're all wonderful. They're just really great people. Yeah, they're that's really a great wonderful. group to jump into. You know, like <laughs> out of all the places, you know, to flee a relationship and and end <laughs> up like that is probably the best 
hug you could jump into at a time when you need it. No, they're, they're very, they're just great women. Really great have you, women. Have you been back uh, over this way to do comedy yet or? I, well, I came over at Christmas time in the UK and, um, and basically I was, I was staying in Waterloo and I, I sort of had a vague intention to look out for stuff to do, but really everybody was, you know, everybody was locked down and there wasn't anything happening. And oh my God, the rain. Yeah. I, know. I, mean, I was waking up with jet lag at 10 30 in the morning and by 11 o'clock it was the sun was already going down not that you could yeah. see the sun but yeah. it's already getting dark again you know and I thought yeah. oh my, my parents were here for for Christmas from Florida so I was like I didn't I didn't know how to tell them it was going to be pretty crappy that week so I just just let them experience it themselves yeah. you know so all right I'm going to let JD in she is home and hopefully settled and, ha and has a drink in her hand <laughs> there she is. Hi, JD. Hi. Oh my God, so happy to meet you. Me too. Me too. I, I was just saying to um, Denise, I'm so sorry about last time, I'm, and I, and thank you for having me back. Oh, we are so happy that you're here. I've been watching your YouTubes, and you are hysterical. <laughs> Really, really enjoying your your comedy. And oh, your thank you, thank you. That's very, hey, very. She's kind. in uh, she's in Santa Monica, so she's, oh wow, she likes to beat us both on weather. <laughs> oh my goodness! When I, I I was in London for six weeks at Christmas, and when I got back, and I, <laughs> when you get off the plane at LAX, you just your whole body just breathes a sigh of relief, you know. <laughs> Suck in all the vitamin D you can, you know. Yeah, I I told Jesus. my mom I I said it's I'm I've never been this uh shade of pasty never <laughs> never it's in it's it's almost blue it's almost blue <laughs> yeah i had friends that were a little worried when i got back you know they, they said you don't look right and i said well <laughs> the reason for that. You know, i haven't seen the sun in six weeks yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's about right it was it was bad over christmas it was wet and dark bad. and so bad. cold yeah it's i mean and then like this week it's been in the, we've had better weather than Jay than you guys have had in South Florida. Like it was oh, 60, it was really? yesterday. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I was I was just uh, asking Fiona what it's like because she gets to rub elbows with uh, Jenny McNulty and Suzanne and oh. Dana and all those people that we've all the, yeah all the funny ladies all the West Coast girls yeah 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 fabulous yeah. 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 It's it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. It's great, and they're all um, they're all doing really really good. Do you, you know I I I want to say like I see a, <laughs> I haven't really done much on Facebook lately because I kind of feel like it's going towards the um, the older <laughs> the older folks, you know. So right, like, <laughs> it's, it's almost becoming like MySpace, right? I I yeah. find myself not looking at it really hardly ever. Yeah, that's why it works for me because I'm that old, you know. <laughs> my, and my people are all they're all, I, you know. I mean, obviously, I, I, I'm sure that I attract the twenty year olds. Ha uh ha. -huh. Uh, um, yeah, no, my people are the you know fifty upwards for sure. Are the, are the Facebook are the Facebook folks? Yeah, yeah, it's um, it is. It just it feels a little funny, but I mean, normally when I was going on like all the time, especially during lockdown, um. I was seeing all the stuff that everybody was doing, you know, I was seeing like Jenny was starting to book gigs and Dana was starting to get back into it. And Suzanne was doing her thing. So I, you know, I know that things are opening up now. Are you finding it, you know, like a little bit easier now to book gigs and all that? Yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, certainly Provincetown worked in October. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then, then of course we had Omicron, which, which sent us all back in the opposite direction. Yeah, who even knew? Um, yeah, and I think that I mean I, I've been a little bit wary because I'm so old. Um, <laughs> I feel this. I feel this on a personal level. Yeah. yeah, and my people, you know, the old people, uh, we we are more nervous than other people. You know, I believe you are um, correct there. Yes. Yeah. So I don't. My next gig isn't till March the third, and oh, okay. uh, and then after that, I've had offers from. Uh, Palm Springs, and I've got something brewing in Vegas, which is very exciting. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. 
I mean, right. Celine, said, Celine said she'd step aside, you know, for a, Adele. For a Adele was like, I need one of mine. <laughs> I need one of mine. <laughs> yeah, 635,000 a gig, yeah? <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> so I have to say, I, I, I'm just jumping in here. So I don't know, like, were we talking about Fiona's career yet? Or did we get to that? The timeline? We didn't the get time. to the timeline yet. We did get to the fact that she fled UK. <laughs> so, so I don't know if you did, if you were dumped or got dumped, but you got out no, of I, the I UK. Escaped. There, was, right. there, was no, there was no dumping, literally an escape. It was Excellent. just like, oh, packed a bag, yeah. oh. took off in the middle of the night. That kind Ghosting. of thing. Yeah, that kind of thing. That's yeah, no, I, I needed to, it was a long relationship and I needed to get out of the, you know, out of the environment. Um, but um, yeah, so I mean, my career started really when I was, a, you know, as a missionary, you know, when I was younger. I mean, I used to preach the gospel with a, a little twist, you know. Wow, that's <laughs> interesting. I, is that a little is that twist? True? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, was, I was a missionary for a while and I got caught up in, because I was so desperately trying to escape being a lesbian, I thought if I could, you know, if I could uh, devote myself to the church and I trained as a nun. Uh, when I was younger, and, um, uh, and there I thought, I mean, and obviously a convent isn't the best place to go if you're trying to escape your sexuality, you know, as a woman. No. <laughs> really? But, um, so, yeah. I, so that was, I think I was always trying to perform, and even when I was a missionary, I was performing in a Christian performing arts group, and we traveled around Canada, America, Honduras. I auditioned and got the part of Satan, and... <laughs> Uh, and traveled around uh, being Satan. And I went there because they said that they could cure me of being gay. And, uh, and on, on route, as we traveled around the rainforests of Choloma and Tegucigalpa and all these cities, I fell in love with the girl who's playing the part of the Virgin Mary. So that did not work out the way they had planned. The whole thing backfired dreadfully, dreadfully. <laughs> Satan and the wow. Virgin Mary. <laughs> That's quite a plot twist right yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> this is so, fantastic. This is a routine in itself. Yeah. No, well, that's really my show is very much about this, this story. So anyway, I did it in the end, I did end up in um I did end up in uh, in America to, to to because I'd done a course there and they seem to be fine about people being gay. Yeah, yeah. There didn't seem to be any, any, there weren't, nobody was upset about it. So, and that's really when I started to come out properly. Mm. And, and I started doing stand up comedy and I was doing the comedy store and things really started to open up. Then I fell in love, everything went backwards. <laughs> you know, just, just steps three forward, three steps. Yeah. Nothing like that to set you, set you backtracked, right? I know, right? <laughs> right? And my girlfriend had a baby, that was tricky. Um, not mine. Um, and oh. that's tricky. okay, that is tricky. Yeah, it was tricky. So um, anyway, so so then uh, then I started getting more serious about it, and uh, and you were asking me, Denise, about how I landed with a very British lesbian. I was doing a show called A Very British Exorcism. Oh, um, that yeah. was the first show, and that was because I was I had a the church did try to exorcise me. You know, when I was wow, young. wow. So, yeah. So, um, what church was that? Is oh, that... It, was a, it was a happy, clappy, charismatic house fellowship. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So the demons, obviously, that's why it was a little bit ironic that I ended up with the role of Satan when I was touring <laughs> Honduras. Um, but a um, mind, yeah, yeah, blow so, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It took me a while to get the whole idea of. The devil out of my mind you know wow yeah. that would be, that is a mm -hmm. uh quite a, a twist i, I just gotta say that, that's a mind fuck that's a mind yeah, fuck. yeah was, i was trying to find a nicer way you, to say that there, there's no <laughs> word that that better encapsulates no. that yet yeah. yeah i think though that you see it, you know the older the older you are the more crazy the stories get because you know things have got a little bit easier so. The further away from it that you yeah. get, like the more you go, oh my God. But when you're right in it, yeah, like that's a kitchen aid mixer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Of uh, you know, of of things that you that you 
well, you know, for me, like that I've heard of, right? You know, that, but I didn't realize on any level that it was going on, you know, yeah. present yeah. day. I mean, but you know, wow. Yeah, I mean, the worst thing is, is when you've had the exorcism, you're always. I mean, I was always terribly hopeful that it was going to rid me of my love of whoever it was at the time. Right, right. And and it didn't. So. I, you know, then you become a hopeless case and then you think, well, I don't know if I'm never going to be cured, I'm never going to be uh, accepted. And so that's, that's where people get very hopeless. Yeah. It's amazing that in something so dark that you mm -hmm. could find, you know, the comedy as you, you know, move away from it, True. you can find the comedy and the irony. Like you said, a yeah. lot of what yeah. yeah. comes from irony you know, sarcasm, yeah, top of the list, but yeah. irony is like right under there. So well, it's, it's definitely comedy plus time. I mean, tra tragedy, sorry, plus yeah. time, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's just, it's really nuts. It must have been, like, explain the culture shock, you know, like stepping into LA where people are so open about everything, their feelings, their expression, right. how they dress, you know, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Can I do that after I found my charger? For the yes. <laughs> you chat and chat amongst yourselves. I'm so sorry. Yes, I'll be we right will. Back. Jay, what are you drinking? <laughs> I am drinking um, Mount Gay rum and Coke. Okay. With oh, you did a, I did a Shanky's Whip Irish whiskey and, oh. and Coke. So obviously the light on the coat yes, we I, match almost. <laughs> and i have my jack daniels hat on a nice i have the on the rocks glass but you can barely see it <laughs> <laughs> we blend we blend today i thought nice. i was having a haircut this afternoon so i didn't I put in a haircut. haircut this afternoon <laughs> the woman never called me back i'm gonna, I never, I'm gonna come to florida on monday like mm -hmm. monica in friends when she had the frizz <laughs> So I just want to prepare you that when I see you, my hair is going to be triple in size. Okay. I will be welcome prepared. Back. Thank you. I'm so sorry about that. I'm, I'm a professional. What can I say? <laughs> we have so, we, have, we, we value professionalism like this much. <laughs> if that. If we that. embrace that. We embrace the, uh, by the seat of your pants, professionalism. Well, that is it. <laughs> that's all that's going on here, really. <laughs> that's a motto. By yeah. the seat of your pants, everything. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so the culture shock when I got here, it was massive because I was I was noticing that people were in relationships with same in same sex relationships, and nobody seemed to be that bothered by it. And well, yeah, I, they and so open, you know, like yeah. none of this, you know, you, I, you feel a little bit silly because you think I've spent forty five years yeah. undercover, right? And these people are listening to me. I mean, I was on a I was on a doing a master's in spiritual psychology cool. for uh, for two years. I was commuting to LA, and um, and I would go there each month, and they would be all just you know talking. They would be listening to my stories, just thinking, and you could see that how baffled they were by, by my experience. You know, yeah. Were, just, were you in the church the whole all that time? No, I left the church probably about when I was about thirty three. I joined the church when I was fifteen. Oh wow, um, that was a long time. Yeah, you, to hung, be in that, you hung in there. That mindset. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I I missed out a lot on just just popular culture because I was uh, I had I had to read the Bible a lot and um, it wasn't time to. And it, it was just a bit like a cult, really. The, you know, I didn't. People even now people talk to me about pop groups and sometimes and I don't know who they are because I was I could tell you about one Corinthians thirteen, but I couldn't tell you. You know. It's so, it seems so in line with like Scientology, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, there you are in the epicenter, you know, of that, of, mm -hmm. of the Scientology. So, wow, it's right? just, it's so layered. It's yeah. crazy. It's, yeah. that's just crazy. Yeah. So, I had, a funny, I had a funny experience, which probably is completely irrelevant to this, but I had a friend's grandma staying with me in LA one time and she had a, she had a schizophrenic breakdown. And she uh, begged me one night to take her down to the Scientology Center in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And I had to, we had a baby at the time, and so I just wanted to get her out of the house. So at three in the morning, I put her in my car, and we drive in our nighties down to the Scientology Center, right? The celebrity <laughs> the Scientology big one. Center. The big, 
Yeah. And we get out of our cars in our nighties, in our nightwear, and she's, I mean, she's got, you know, curlers in her hair and she's got sort of a full <laughs> length, full length, she was Australian, she had a, not that's really relevant, but she was wearing a full length nightie with frills and everything. And, and she was wandering around the Scientology Centre. She couldn't get in, obviously. <laughs> Yeah. But, um, you know, and she didn't like Scientology and she was like swearing at the building. You know, I won't Ooh. say what she's saying, but <laughs> the security guards came and got us pretty quickly. I would think so. Wow. That's a, blaze, that's a blazing ad for Scientology right there. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they were on it. Yeah. Oh my God. That's just yeah. who. So <laughs> when, when did you start to. Uh... When did you start to do the comedy? Like, when did you come out of that? Like, I, I really admire the fact that you're, you started later in, than most people do in the industry. Yeah. And you, you have had success and have a fan base mm -hmm. within your demographic. But I, I just think that's amazing when women can do that because that's a lot to overcome in such a youth driven industry. Thank so. you. I think I think uh, I was saying to Denise that earlier that um, I uh, was um, when I came out, like when I came moved over here, when I came out, um, then it was as if because I had had to mute myself so much uh, in every aspect, because obviously when you are pretending to be something or not, I mean, I was, you know, pretending to be straight till I was about mm -hmm. five. Right. And so you're constantly lying. You don't know how much you're lying, but you are lying all the time. So when I came out and I was in this environment where people were telling the truth and being honest about themselves and suddenly all that went, that's when I realized that um, I had this other thing that I needed to come out, that needed mm -hmm. to come out. I, I needed to come out as a performer. So the two things were like simultaneous because yeah, it was just extraordinary. So How and I, remember, I remember being on this course and I remember sort of at the end of the first year standing up and saying, I, I, I know what I want to do. I want to live in L.A. I want to live on a boat in the marina and I want to do stand up comedy. And by the way, I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole thing, it was just like the whole thing just exploded all at once. It, and I think, you know, when you think about, like you said, the length of time pretending to be something you're not and then all of the sudden all of that goes away and you yeah. realize you know I, it just it doesn't it feel like ov almost overwhelming it is overwhelming and and you suddenly feel that you've got to absolutely make the most of every minute because you spent all of this time right just uh, just like I don't know not dead exactly but just lying and not being truly yourself so suddenly mm -hmm. you, then so that's how I went from being completely closeted to being suddenly I'm on stage saying I'm a very British lesbian because I right. thought I cannot I cannot pretend anymore I have to be of, I have to be of service I mean that sounds very I mean I was a nun so forgive me for that <laughs> but, um, but I, I have to I have to make up for lost time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And there yeah, must be other people like me. And there are, like, you know, about my the show I do on Facebook, the two two days a week, I do my Corona Live poetry show. Do you know about that? I don't. Okay, so two days, when Corona started, I think within a few days, I went on to Facebook. I did my first Facebook Live. And I, I was just, you know, in some kind of, like, shoddy, you know, wife beater. You're not allowed to call that a wife beater, are you? People... I, I get complaints when I call I told you, life. you know, this much professionalism. <laughs> <laughs> and this much PC. Anyway. I was going to say, no political correctness. <laughs> yeah. Worry about. Well, just to explain, <laughs> here a wife beater is a kind of t-shirt. I won't use that word and I apologize deeply. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I came on and I did five minutes and I just chatted away and I just thought, I've, if we're going to be locked up, I have to do something. I've got to be, so, I've got to be, I've got to get out of myself somehow and I've got to start maybe giving something because I, I can't, I'm not doing shows, I'm not doing anything. So, so that developed and that developed into, I did it every day for a month. And now it's, I do it on a Monday and Fridays at one o'clock uh, California time. And it's now developed into what's called Corona Live Poetry 
left coast lesbian lunch crying in bed with right. Oh my God, that's brilliant. That's um, brilliant. And but it, you know, it, I think you got to live every moment as your authentic self now because you mm -hmm. win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You that. So just because of lockdown and this virus, I mean, you still need an outlet, you know? Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. brilliant. Like we were saying, like Facebook's the pretty much the place to do it for, yeah. you know, to, to hit yeah. your audience. Yeah, you know? it's only for my, age, for my age group. And, and yeah. of course, then I discovered all sorts of women just like me who'd had the same experience as me living mm -hmm. really? secret lives and so on. And so it's quite a lovely community that's developed, you know? And that's when I did so my sweet. I did my show in Santa Monica just um, a few months ago, or well, just before Christmas, and people flew in from Massachusetts, from Waco, Texas. From that's amazing. Yeah, that's wow. huge. Amazing. That's and huge. people have made friends. It's been wonderful. Yeah. That's, so you know, that's nice. The community, the feel of the community, the fans build their own community, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. I find that your story is so inspiring because. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of women in particular think when you get past 30, even in this right. business, you, you know, what's the point? Like, I'm a musician and I started late in life uh, to be playing music professionally. I started at 32. Wow. I wasn't in the college band or the high school band. I was an accountant and <laughs> I started and th at 32. I started, you know, I'm like, I'm not happy doing this. And, and I, um, you know, I started playing music and putting a band together and but um I love that you kind of made your vision board mm -hmm. of wanting to live in LA and live in a marina and so you did you got to do all those things right yeah. you live in yeah. LA and marina yeah. that's amazing you I'm like so inspired by this wow. today thank you I love thank that you. you did that and I mean I'm sure I'm sure you must have had like the road wasn't easy right like financially in this business it's very hard to do what you love and support yeah. yourself with that so well i've now developed since in, in the last few year, few years i've now developed because i'm also a psychotherapist so oh. I, have a, I have a practice not a full practice because i can't because of my other work but um that's what helps me when especially since corona it's like been amazingly helpful yeah that's cool. i mean everybody's right. mental health is like frazzled yeah. You know, just again, not, not knowing when you're going to be able to get out, when you're going to be able to see people, are, are you going to want to? I mean, I'm just like, I tell everybody, I'm still so people phobic. I am <laughs> max, you know, and I'm like still so people phobic. You know, even when yeah. my, my uh, parents were here, I felt really bad because they, you know, there was all the, the testing and I, just to, for them to fly, you know, test before you leave, test on day two. And so they did everything right, but they never got their test results back. So I didn't <laughs> want to let them leave, leave go spreading germs if I didn't know, you know, if they had it or not. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the first half of their trip was literally spent in my tiny house. And, um, <laughs> you know, it was just, it was, it was frazzling. And then when we finally did go out, uh, I took them to a big garden center in uh, Esher mm -hmm. and, um, and I was the one that was having the problem. Like I was, <laughs> everybody was in masks. Everybody was very, you know, good yeah, as yeah. far as that. But, you know, just having, you know, people walking by you and cutting in front of you. And you're, I was just like, oh, 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 I just haven't been that exposed, you know, before. And it, and it just got me so jittery. I can't, I feel so bad for the person who has to sit next to me on the plane Monday. I really, really do. <laughs> I'm just going to be a, well, like a blubbering mess the whole time. The planes are the feel. safest place to be, really. Because That's what I keep hearing. So I'm like, yeah. Mm. yeah. I just, yeah. Put that in your filing cabinet, your mental yeah. filing cabinet. <laughs> yeah. Safest yeah. place to be. Safest place to be. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah. It's the airports, too. Like, Ugh. so. Yeah. It's just so are you still work. with the woman that you were with when you came to the States? The, oh, the my woman goodness. That had the baby? There's been some recycling since then. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> upcycling <laughs> <laughs> always always okay that's a plus <laughs> the thing about when you live in when you live in california um there's so much uh emphasis on evolution and consciousness and um you know they, they do go a little bit nutty uh you know some sometimes but um 
you know, I love, I, what I really appreciate is the attitude of everything is for our learning, everything, mm -hmm. every relationship, every situation, you know, is about, uh, you know, is a, is a message for us to take on board and for us to evolve and move forward. And if we evolve, we inevitably uh, get into relationships with people who, um, who are drawn to us because if they have a similar, mm -hmm. similar vibe, you know? Right. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's you know, true. A, lot of, a lot of crazy yeah. old ladies. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> anyway, I, I thought they kicked you out after 50. <laughs> <laughs> out of LA? Or, or if you start tipping the scales like 165, 170, you're out. <laughs> no, well, that, as, I do sometimes. Like that. Yeah, I walk the streets of LA and I think, where are they? Where are the old people? <laughs> I, I remember I'm one of them, but I'm not quite, I'm not quite, you know, you just don't, you know, I don't know where they go, but they, they go somewhere. <laughs> I'm going to say like um, Santa Barbara, Montecito. Well, <laughs> yeah. They're millionaires, yeah. They're millionaires. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's just, I just can't even uh, imagine, uh, you know, like I get culture shock. Like I, I totally get it, you know, especially mm -hmm. leaving South Florida and coming here, you yeah. know, so I, I understand it, but not on the scale like it had to have been for you, you know, like I, I just, I just can't even fathom it. Do you, do you miss being here? Do you wonder like what it would have been like if, if you, I stayed? Yeah. Yeah. If I stayed, I would never have got into stand up comedy. Really? Yeah. It does I, seem I had difficult to, I, here. It does. It seems like there's only two routes, like Hammersmith Apollo <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a television show, a panel show. You right. Know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't doesn't seem like there's a lot of avenues to to be able to. Well, it's just the attitude. I mean, the, the attitude here is can do. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. You know, and there's there is there is some insanity with that. I mean, people start doing things they really shouldn't be doing because of that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can. Because I can. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Right. Um, right. Yeah. But, it does, it um, seems a little oppressed here. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. and JD, you were saying about me coming over and, you know, how. How, how brave it was. I, here, I didn't have to be as brave because, for example, when I had said, you know, announced to people, I'm going to live on a boat in the marina and I'm going to uh, do stand up comedy, I think within a few weeks, I had a phone call from someone saying, uh, My friend needs someone to cat sit on his boat in the marina. Wow. That's you the sort of manifested thing. that. Yeah. I was just going to use that word. And I was like, That's so LA. And there you said it. Okay. <laughs> so, and that's just, it just feels like normal, you know, here now. I mean, we're living here. That's kind of, you know, this, I have this, I, I love the motto the, uh, to expect the unexpected. And I have very much got that attitude now. And uh, it's, it's exciting being here because, um, because there is that level of awareness, uh, not amongst everywhere, obviously, but um, there is a, a level of awareness about how yeah. the universe works, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's true. So, that part I get. Like I. Yeah. So I when I got that, when there. I got, yeah, when I got that call from this person saying, you know, would would you like to, would you like this? I said, of course. I, I resigned from my job immediately, and off I went. To be fair, I'd already resigned from my job. And the other, the other <laughs> as soon as I had announced that, I knew I had to resign from my job to make it happen. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. um, and the other the other thing I, I I love is the and I don't know can't remember who said it but at the moment of commitment the universe responds and and I have such so many examples of how I made a step uh, in some crazy direction and the universe met me on the way you know but you have wow. that moment, you have that moment where you just literally it's like you jump off the cliff you know. Yeah. That was so brave of you. That, that was it's quite a, a leap sink or swim to do with kind of thing. That. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It, it wasn't, it wasn't because I, I can't tell you in this environment here, it's, it's more part of the vernacular. It's, it's as if, you know, yes, of course, you make a brave step and the universe is going to meet you. It's just like, it's a whole yeah, different way. don't really know any other way. I mean, everybody yeah. that's out there is there taking risks, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, when Donna, when, when my, uh, my, my friend and I went, um, I have a, I have a cousin that's been out there for like 30 years now. Um, 
But when my friend and I went out there, we were staying at the Standard on Sunset Strip. Mm -hmm. And um, every morning, you know, we would sit by the pool and have breakfast or whatever. And uh, my friend would be like, you know, uh, half the people here, they're not even staying here. They're just here to be seen. And I'm like, <laughs> really? How did you, how do you know? She was like, I see them. They just, they come, you know, yeah. their newspaper and this is where they're. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. And then we realized in four days, every person that we met or talked to yeah. was in the business. Like there was yeah. nobody that said, I work at a bank or I work at the library right. or I'm an accountant or, you know, yeah. no, everybody there was you know, uh, in the business in some yeah. way, shape or form, they're a writer, they're a performer, they're, and you know, that's, it is the place to be, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what you want, you know, yeah. your opportunities, you know, are there. And it, I mean, yeah, it does take like a, maybe a little bit of luck, perhaps a little yeah. nepotism, who knows, but yeah. you know, uh, your chances are so much better. You know, yeah, yeah. In that environment where everybody's kind of thinking the same way and, and in the same yeah. way. Yeah, I remember being oh. in a Starbucks line, sort of when I was first there, and hearing somebody in front of me saying, "You know, I think we, you know, we could probably make, you know, it would probably take five million. You know, we've got five million for the movie. You know, we could maybe we can get another investor and get another five million. And I'm hearing these numbers. You know, five right. million scraping you know. together <laughs> <laughs> Starbucks." <laughs> And I'd been a I'd been a high school teacher for you know for many years before after the nun thing, and then before coming. Oh, in. so I mean, you know, we were we were always worried about whether we could get pens. You know? Right, right. <laughs> and they're talking stuff. about five yeah. million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's a different way of life. It's a different it's way. It's really of life. like go big or go home. There, I it guess. It really you is. Know, like a lot of people go home. I think my. My immigration, my immigration lawyer said to me once, she gave me some sort of figure, something like 3,000 a, a week uh, in California, 3,000 3, people a week leave California. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's like that in Nashville. It's like that in Nashville. Everyone's in the music business, no matter who you talk to. And it doesn't matter what they're doing at the moment. The bartenders, the bellmen, all those people, the waiters, they're they're always in the business mm -hmm. because they want to be there to be heard. So I get yeah. that. I, yeah. I get that. Yeah. That's I remember having lunch once with a, with a friend who was a casting director and it wasn't even in the center of LA. It was kind of on the, on the outside and we were sat there and just having dinner. And the, the woman said to the waitress, you are an actress, right? Um, <laughs> and the woman said, yeah, yeah, the girl said, she was in her twenties. She said, yeah. She said, well, can I give you my card? Um, I love <laughs> your look. I love your look. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, there and then, it's just like, oh my God, oh my God. Day made, yeah. Yeah, That's day me. made, wow. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it is, um, it, it's 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 crazy. It's a whole different world. You know, like I couldn't, in the four days that I was there, honestly, on the plane on the way back, I was just like, I couldn't wait to get home because <laughs> I was so out of my comfort zone. The size of me, you know, my <laughs> personality, having dark hair nothing works you know nothing works <laughs> That's on any level yeah. <laughs> I was I was so fish out of water I was like eh, I was so uncomfortable but you know it's just it's where you go you know mm -hmm. when you have the, that that kind of uh you know that drive you know yeah. like I would like love writing you know books and stuff that I, I could do that right here I can be stubby. I can have dark hair. <laughs> I don't have to leave the house. So I'm in the good nurturing environment for this, you know, but yeah, it, <laughs> when you uh, have an idea and, um, you know, and you're in a place that everybody, you know, is so similar, you know, especially like I said, with that group of comedians, women, yeah, yeah. you know, that they're smart, they're, you know, they're business savvy, you know, yeah. they're fantastic. Like, you know, <clears throat> that's definitely the place to be you want to be someplace where you can soak all that soak it in yeah soak that in. yeah one of the things that keeps me going is is having a sense of you know because i came out so late because i have so much empathy for lesbians who struggled the way that i did yeah i think when you keep a sense of your own you know like what is what is my mission you know and yeah how can i be a service and 
rather than that helps me better than how do I get to the top or how do I, you know. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. How do I make people laugh? Yeah. You know, like that's that that brings out uh, something in people, you know, like yeah. the. Because I can't, of... I can't compare myself with, um, you know, there's some, I mean, I've come across huge comedians here and I can't compare myself with them. I can't, you know, wish for their, well, I can wish for their uh, status. But if you do that too much, you know, it, it will sink you. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. totally understand that because it, what you're saying about, being in, in LA is like when I keep saying Nashville, but I felt you get there and you feel this energy of the music and the city and everyone being part of it. But then there's this overwhelming feeling of what am I doing here? There's so many people trying for the same mm -hmm. brass ring. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's the best of the people, you know, the guy that's the bellman might be a, an amazing singer, an amazing guitar player and songwriter or whatever. So you could let it sink you, you're right, if you don't keep your eye on your own prize because yeah. you could easily get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. and, and in my case, intimidated. I felt intimidated a lot of the times. When, like, I don't belong here. Like, why am I on this roster? Why am I playing on this stage, you know? But you mm -hmm. kind of have to push through it and find your own reason. Yeah, you so, do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it keeps. I think that's what keeps you going, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it really does. And, and I, because I'm very lucky, because I have two things going on. One is the performing, and the other is doing the poetry live show twice a week, which I don't charge for, and uh, and it's created a great community. And that's out of that, great. Some, some workshops, and I've been able to work in my in my psychotherapy role. I've been able to work with lesbians, or not really work with them, but just create a bit of a community workshop community. It's like it all came together again. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah, amazing. that's so yeah. great. Wow. Yeah. So your uh, your Facebook is it under what is what is your Facebook under? It's called a very. It's called a, a, a. The show is on a very British lesbian or Fiona Goodwin. But if you go to my website, which is fionagoodwin.com, all the details for everything are, are on that. That's fantastic. So they can yeah. get to those things yeah. and, and know where yeah. you're going to be. Where are you performing in March? You said you have a show coming up in March. Uh, yes, it's at the uh, Marilyn Monroe Theatre in Hollywood. Excellent. And, um, it's part of a, a guy called Eddie Alfano. He was on Shameless and all sorts of great, great TV shows. He runs this thing. He'll be performing as well. And oh, there's, nice. kind of a, there's a run of, you know, a, 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 a roster of people performing. Um, oh, cool. Great. So there's a lot of ways we can see you live. We can see you on Facebook. We can go to your website. We can see yeah. you the poetry thing. This is, this is really. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. <laughs> or, you can, or you can read the book. Do you know about the book? I don't know about the book. Right. Here's the book. Hold on one what? second. There you go. There's the book. A very British lesbian. Oh, oh perfect. A copy of that. That's perfect. <laughs> Thank you. I would imagine on, on the website we can or you can yeah order you can find that. that it's on Amazon and Kindle and stuff oh Fiona thank you so much for, oh, you're so for making this happen this is your story is just absolutely incredible oh, and your comedy is fresh it's fantastic thank you thank I have you. to say you were well worth waiting for oh, yes yeah. yes, yes so I'd love to come back you guys are just delightful thank you so much Thank you so much. Have a wonderful uh, evening there for you in the middle of the day. Have a great evening. <laughs> bed. Jay, have a good dinner. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> That's and great. We will Denise. definitely have you back. Thank you. Good luck, Denise, with the weather in England. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to Florida for a month, baby. I'm so excited. Yeah. Hi, hey, baby. Have a fantastic evening. Take care. Thank you. Love Bye, you guys. guys. Bye. Like, never stop chasing your dreams. Uh -huh. There, that's C. C. We drank way too much whiskey.